Well, in Thailand here, we see more and more people started using Apple products, you know, the iPhones, iPads. IPad. The new one is coming out, the iPad, iPad 3. 3. Well, they didn't say 3, they said the new iPad is coming out on the 16, but not in Thailand though. Not yet. In 10 other countries. But anyway, uh, we are seeing how it's doing here in Thailand, but how does it doing? And China, let's take a quick update here. Apple Inc. got a second partner in China to sell the iPhone in the world's biggest mobile phone market. The deal, however, may be too late to catch the Samsung Electronics Co. with a market share that is three times larger and is growing. China Telecom Corp. began selling the iPhone last week as Apple tries to build on its 7.5% share of the country's smartphone sales. Samsung controlled 24.3% of the market for phones that can play videos and games, according to the Gardner Inc., using a strategy. Uh, strategy of allying with the three of the nation's third generation networks since such services started in 2009. Succeeding in China is important for Apple as shipments of smartphones in the country are projected to jump 52 percent this year to 137 million units, overtaking the U.S. for the first time as the world's biggest market. Unlike Samsung's strategy of partnering with all carriers, Apple has limited its own success by not making a device compatible with the nation's biggest operator, China Mobile Limited. Gardner analyst Sandy Chen said she does not expect Apple to replace Samsung anytime soon. China Telecom is the nation's smallest carrier, so the extent to which they can help Apple is quite limited. The 16.8 percent points gap in China between Cupertino, California-based Apple, and Samsung almost double from the third quarter. While Samsung is number one and Apple number five in China, the global story is different. Worldwide, Apple passed its Suwon, South Korea-based competitor to become the biggest smartphone vendor in the fourth quarter, according to Gartner. Apple's partnership with China's second and third largest carriers gives it an access to about 34 percent of the nation's 988 million mobile users, while Samsung targeted the whole market. iPhones are not sold in China's mobile 655 million subscribers, a number almost equal to the combined population of the U.S., Brazil and Mexico. Well, now the Thai airport, Swanapum International Airport's Immigration Bureau is defending itself against complaints of its handling of the airport's arrivals and departures. The Immigration Bureau said they are understaffed at the airport's immigration division and the increased number of passengers are overwhelming. According to the Chief of Immigration Division 2, Natal Postal 1, the Bureau was set up to manage a maximum capacity of 80,000 passengers per day when Suwanapum opened in 2006. However, he said there are currently between 160,000 and 180,000 passengers arriving at and departing the airport per day. The Immigration Division 2 chief said the estimates means an increase of 5 million passengers for both departure and arrival. The division employs 1,045 immigration officers after 267 officers were either promoted or moved to work elsewhere. Airport Director Som Chai Sawadipon said at least 20 additional immigration officers should be added to the Suwanapum workforce. The division chief said no immigration officer wants to work at Suwanapum Airport. Given the choice, the airport would be the last choice. He said heavy workloads, a high risk of facing a probe when it comes to a mistake, unattractive overtime payments and high living costs, which is in Bangkok, are among the reasons they don't like Suwanapum. Transport Minister Jarupong Reung Suwan said he had recently talked with Finance Minister Kitti Ratnaranong on ways to improve working conditions for the airport's immigration officers.